In this video, we're going to install a DC load center along with this massive circuit breaker. If you enjoyed these videos, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. In one of the previous episodes, when I was trying the miter saw, I popped a circuit breaker, and when it did that, a spark came out the bottom of the circuit breaker. Now this shows my lack of knowledge in this topic, but I did not realize that sparks could come out of circuit breakers. I, before that, I thought circuit breakers were sealed, but no, there's, there's actually openings in these things, and sparks can come out of them. So after I saw that, uh, I decided to put the money into uh, upping the safety and uh, uh, so I picked up this DC load center from Midnight Solar. So let's check this out. This is a steel box and then the cover here can come off like that. And inside uh, there's different options for DIN rails comes with a grounding bar. It also came with a positive bus bar. Uh, you could uh, put the negative terminal for the battery there and it has a lot of knockouts all over the box. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below. Now I've got to mount this and I'm going to have the solar wires from the PV array outside come directly into this box because then it needs to go to additional circuit breakers which will be mounted in this opening and this big circuit breaker is going to be mounted right here in this one. Now there's a lot of places I could mount this box, but I decided I'm going to place it here. And in, in doing so, I'm going to move these uh, 12 volt components. Uh, have this installed with a couple of drywall screws. This is a 48 to 12 volt converter. I had put some aluminum behind there just as a heat sink. I just moved the positive wire for the Victron battery monitor. Okay, let's get these uh, 12 volt components out of the way. I'm using a permanent marker to mark out where the openings are located. If I just cut these openings out exactly where they're located, then I won't have enough space to get to these screws. The top screws are for the circuit breaker, and this is called a panel mount circuit breaker, and it has these pan head screws that go on the surface. And then the bottom screws are for this uh, blank opening um, and so you can choose how many circuit breakers you want and then screw the blank back in place. So I actually want to make this large enough for all of that. So from the side we have the panel that would go right there and now I'll be able to mark out the size of where this panel goes. I marked out where the panel goes on each with plenty of room to get to those screw heads. So now we can cut this out. A good tool for this would probably be an oscillating tool, you know, one of those uh, little saws that vibrate back and forth. Uh, but I don't have one of those, so we'll do it with uh, the circular saw here. Now it's time for the dry fit. So we throw that in there. Okay, so it looks like we're just a little bit tight right here. And then it looks like we should be good after that. Okay, second dry fit. Let's put that in there. And take the plate. Yep. So what I'm looking for here is I can see both screw holes completely and I'm not binding anymore so that can float freely in there good now when this box is mounted in the cabinet 
I need to get electricity in through here. Now it needs to come in from the solar array outside. So what I'm going to do is set this down and let's get the hole drilled for it. So we'll start by making a center punch. Right, drill that out. Go ahead and screw this in place so it doesn't shift around while we do this. There we go. Switch bits. Now the thing about this is that it needs to be level. There we go. Now we're just going through the insulation. And now I'm up against the exterior. Now we should be popped out on the other side, so let's go check. Yep, so we're right there. So, a little bit lower than where I, I guessed. <laughs> now we know that is where we need to drill out for our fittings. These are the fittings we're going to use. This is just a little piece of pipe of the conduit and we have the whatever this is lock ring or something so this is going to come in to the back side just like that now we don't have the proper size knockout so we're just going to make it okay so i recently picked up this big step bit from harbor freight and i don't imagine it's going to last very long uh, <laughs> but hopefully long enough Okay, how big do I need this? Probably the whole way. Damn, I didn't want that to happen. I was trying to drill it out so it wouldn't do that. All right, we need enough room for this fitting. So I think this one will do it. Uh, this is a one and three quarter. There we go. All the way through. Let's see here. There we are. And you can see the cellulose in there. Love cellulose, man. And will that fit? Yes. Look at that. Just barely makes it. It's scraping. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's what we want, no extra space. Outside, we're gonna put an LB, uh, one inch, right there, and it's gonna go through the wall. So we're gonna have to drill this out. You can see the cellulose in there. Once the hole is drilled out, you still have to push that cellulose out of the way. So I'm just using this piece of rod that I have all right, so it's all the way through the wall, and now I can, I can push that cellulose side to side, get it out of my way. You can kind of see how I'm doing that. So way you don't have to remove the cellulose, just, just push it. Now I'm using this one inch conduit. Should fit well. There you go, all the way through. Uh, but I needed it larger because of the fitting. So as you can see, that fitting is going to go just like that. And then let's look at it on the other side. You can see the conduit coming all the way through. Plenty of space. But remember, I need that LB to fit there. And so now this joint here uh, needs to get uh, caulked in place. And then you're going to be fastening the conduit up top. So I, I, I drilled out this piece of metal and cut the edges so that it would kind of fit into uh, this recess that's back here. And then I put the retaining ring on and this is just a plastic bushing. It helps make the edge soft. And so this goes through and that this fitting's already glued onto that pipe. And now I can take this guy and put it on and wiggle it around a little bit, have a little bit of play so that I can get it into that recess. And then when I screw this whole 
uh, box to the wall, then this uh, guy won't be able to go anywhere. It'll be nice and secure. Uh, the wires are still protected. So I, d I think it's, uh, it's good enough. What I've actually got to do is mount this big giant breaker, but uh, I'm gonna mount it a little bit lower. Instead of being right smack in the middle, I'm gonna mount it a little bit lower because I also have this guy. So I have two big ones. So if I try to put this breaker down here, it's not gonna fit. I could try putting it over here, uh, but then my uh, terminals, these two guys would wind up being close to each other once I get this out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of the, the DIN rail up here. I'm gonna have a DIN rail down low uh, for some of the circuit breakers. And then this other circuit breaker, I'm going to cut the box a little bit and mount both of these guys next to each other uh, because I have enough clearance to do that. Let's, uh, let's widen this out a little bit so that both can fit in here. surge protection devices but and then I have two big and two big breakers here uh, this big 250 amp breaker is for the inverter and this 125 amp breaker is for the charge controller connection to the battery 
I wanted to see if I could make one of these guys um, you know instead of uh, buying another one so I just uh, heated up this plastic here and stretched it and held it in there it's actually in there really tight it looks like it would just pop out but so now it's nice smooth transition because the wires need to go up here and through this opening and I'm gonna put the charge controller out here uh, so now they can make that nice smooth opening and not touch any of the metal uh, you know not not wear on the opening here and not wear on the hole so everything could be uh, you know protected yep there we go it's a little bit tight right there <laughs> don't need any screws to hold it in place do I and then you can just tug on it a little bit just some of the paint build up right there cool Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and if you guys don't mind, let me know if you uh, like the point of view camera angle uh, or just stick to the tripod. I couldn't get all the shots that I wanted to inside the box with the tripod mount, which is why I strapped the camera to my head. But let me know, and please like, subscribe, comment, and share.